thank you very much, Fast Markets, for having uh, my partner Rodney Hooper and me back to speak at the 15th anniversary of the Lithium Industries Flagship Conference. Before we get into the video, we'd like to announce that we have our very first sponsor, Zolandas. Zolandas offers brinefield services and has the technology to speed up understanding of your lithium resources. We'll tell you more about them later, but until then, check out Zolandas.com. We're also excited to share that we are now sponsored as well by Lithium Royalty Corp. Stay tuned for later in the video to hear more about them. It's great to be here and again to see so many old friends and a lot of new people. Record attendance, over 1,100. And last year we thought uh, 650 was a lot. I'll share today, as always, some thoughts on lithium capital markets. But first, I'll take the opportunity to provide a retrospective of the lithium 1.0 Lithium 2.0, and now the Lithium 3.0 cycles over the past 15 years. As always, through the prism of pop culture icons like Billy Joel, and double and triple entendres. My life, narrating Lithium Bowl, began one year after Fast Market's first Lithium conference. In 2009, promoting Western Lithium, an unconventional clay deposit in the northwestern corner of this great state of Nevada. America's lithium, lithium Americas. We are always what our situations hand us. It's either sadness or euphoria, to quote a lyric from Summer Highland Falls. RK Equity's focus in lithium has always been principally on ex-China supply for ex-China demand. Soon after, Obama and China stimulated after the global financial crisis with EV, battery, and other clean energy policies, I met John Heikaway, then of Byron Capital Markets, a pioneering Bay Street boutique focused on clean technologies and materials. He joined RK Equity events in New York, which were overflowing to hear Jay Shemalaskis explain why after successfully building and exiting one of China's largest gold mines, he saw lithium as the new gold. Heikaway suggested in his December 2009 coverage initiation that 150 million market cap WLC would more than double in price to 350, equivalent to $17.50 today considering the 5 to 1 stock consolidation in 2018. It took Western Lithium 12 years and the merger in 2015 and development of Lithium America's Argentina assets to reach that target price. Other Lithium 1.0 developers were Galaxy in Australia. Or a Cobre in Argentina, and Canada Lithium and RB Energy in Quebec, now called North American Lithium. I look forward to seeing first shipments and revenue from that asset next month, and 60% plus gross margins for Siona and Piedmont, similar to Mount Catlin and Olaroz. Lithium, as Elon Musk points out, is actually the new software. What is funny in hindsight is that Talizan's planned IPO in September 2009 to be duly listed on both the TSX and ASX was pulled. Think about that. The world's greatest and largest spodumene producer couldn't raise less than $200 million at a reasonable price. Talizan was forced to go public a year later on the TSX Venture Exchange by reverse merging with a company called Solar 7 which otherwise had 39,000 hectares of lithium brine in the Atacama. Tangshi and Rockwood took over Talizan for just a billion dollars in 2014 and 15. Soon after that, Albemarle bought Rockwood for over $6 billion. I attended my first ever Fast Markets event in 2016 here in Las Vegas as Lithium 2.0 had begun. I was ahead of my time representing a $200 million SPAC led by mining billionaire Tom Kaplan, whose team was intrigued by lithium. I set up meetings for Electrum representatives with Ken Brinsden of Pilbara, James Calloway of Oracobre, Guy Barasa of Namaska, Peter Secker of Bacanora, the owners of North American Lithium. And I had meetings with, and dinner with Tom Hodgson, George Ireland, and John Canalitis of Lithium Americas. We added that year as clients and investments Piedmont Lithium in Carolina, Kidman and Altura in Western Australia, and Millennial in Argentina, among others. In 2017, I formally launched the Lithium Iron Bull newsletter and the RK Equity Lithium Scoreboard. I joined Twitter in September of that year. 
I penned widely read issues about lithium being at a tipping point in 2017 and as a noble investment pursuit when Stanley Whittingham and his team were recognized with the Nobel Prize in Chemistry, which led to invitations for me to speak at conferences and in online video and audio interviews. Chris Evans, now Managing Director of Winsome Resources, showed me around Altura as Chief Operating Officer in February 2018 as Lithium 2.0 began to bust with Morgan Stanley's big short call. I channeled that year John Lennon and David Bowie to imagine Young Americans, Lithium Americas, Ioneer, Piedmont, and Albemarle's Kings Mountain, four likely candidates for secure, sustainable USA lithium supply. Late 2018 saw the IPOs of Livent on the New York Stock Exchange and Ganfeng on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Both raised money at the low end of their price range and performed poorly immediately after the IPO. I also visited Tesla for the first time at the invitation of Vivas Kumar, who had reached out on LinkedIn, appreciating my analysis of Ganfeng from its Red Herring IPO perspectives. I framed New Year's Day 2019 through the prisms of U2 and Pink Floyd, under a blood red sky for lithium equities, us and them, USA and China. 2019 was the year of the pig, according to China's Zodiac. As 2018 ended, capitalist pig Albemarle bid $2 billion for mineral resources Wajna. And the big chili, what I suggested could be the China nationalization of the people's lithium via Tangxi's $4 billion bid for a 24% stake of SQM. Rodney Hooper joined me back then, and we launched the Lithium Iron Rocks podcast to help synthesize and share our views about the irreplaceable element of the electric era. Men at work in the land down under, like Ken Brinsden and I Feel Good James Brown, joined us as guests. We also managed to kiss Luke Kassam, CEO of Albemarle, at a near cycle bottom of $50 a share in May 2019. Hindsight was Q1 2020. The RK scoreboard was Penny Lane, almost famous lithium 2.0. COVID brought the police. Don't stand so close to me. When the world is running down, you make the best of what's still around. The aggregate market cap of some 30 advanced development companies at COVID's bottom on March 22, 2020 was just $800 million. Think about that. 30 companies, $800 million. More than a dozen of these names have become unicorns in the three years since. As Robin Hood youth gambled their stimmy checks on crypto, NFTs, and GameStop, the Tesla YouTube intelligentsia proved smarter than institutional and Tesla -like bears as Tesla went parabolic and hit a trillion market cap. As battery day hype started to percolate, my May 2020 note asking which lithium company might Tesla buy got approving nods from those who agreed that Lithium Americas proved or looked a good fit. RK Equity launched Rockstock Channel just ahead of Tesla's battery day. Jerome Powell's monetary overstimulus helped turn PLL and LAC into highly liquid meme stocks. Biden's Inflation Reduction Act, among other EV and battery-friendly policies, have continued to change the game. It is ironic that as Livent and Allchem rationalize their need to bulk up to serve Tier 1 customers better, Lack is being forced to shrink into two smaller companies, just as Ganfen controlled Kachari begins first production. The geopolitics of lithium remain as interesting as ever. Hot tip to fast markets for going ahead earlier than others with restarting in-person conferences. The hybrid September 2021, again here in Las Vegas, was sparsely attended, but highly impactful. A spodumene duopoly of Pilbara, which had mothballed Altura, and Albemarle Minrez, which mothballed Wajina, created a spodumene shortage. We interviewed Ken Brinsden as the market watched enthusiastically the rapid rise from each trade on Pilbara's innovative BMX platform. He counseled, strong pricing will only get stronger. And as commodity equities follow commodity prices, I counseled to listen to Steve Winwood that lithium equities would 
be back in the high life again and reach all-time higher love. In Rodney's review of the latest quarterly reports, he noted that on balance, the world's spodumene producers underperformed, producing less than expected at higher cost and generally lower grade. Minrez just further reduced production guidance and raised cost guidance for both Mount Marion and Wajina. And interestingly, noted its hydroxide tolling agreement with Ganfeng has been terminated. Is the market softening for 3.8% and DSO spodumene as Sigma Lithium, Core Lithium, North America Lithium begin shipments and as Greenbushes, Pilgangora, and Wajina continue to ramp? Time will tell. In 2021, several Lithium 2.0 vintage developers in Argentina got acquired, some at rich prices. Neolithium by Zision, Millennial by LAC, Rincon by Rio, and Lithia by Ganfeng. But the most significant was the merger of Oracobre and Galaxy, which I talked about here last year and will again in a few minutes. Late last year, I discussed the evolution of Australia's crocodile rock, for which Rodney created this great slide. Lithium is certainly abundant in the Earth's crust, but there are just 14 jort compliant resources in Australia. All of the producers with above 50 million tons of mineral resource estimates are tightly held and or vertically integrated to making chemicals. Several hydroxide plants are being commissioned or under construction in Australia. There is not a lot of spare spodumene supply available. Ron Mitchell's Global Lithium in Australia is in Australia's catbird seat, in my opinion with two of those 14, which could equate to over 50 million tons resource. Jumping in here from the editing room to tell you more about our very first sponsor, Zolandes. Zolandes provides services in subsurface data visualization, downhole geophysics, and other services for lithium brine operations. They just expanded into North America, and no matter where you sit in the brine industry, Zolandes can help you speed up and improve your projects. Go to zolandes.com for more. We'd like to introduce a great new sponsor for Rockstock Channel, Lithium Royalty Corp. Lithium Royalty Corp is at the center of a global energy transition and manages a globally diversified portfolio of lithium-focused royalties in electrification and decarbonization. With 32 royalties on 29 higher-grade, low-cost projects from exploration to production, Lithium Royalty Corp covers all the bases with well-managed risk, ESG considerations, and a scalable royalty structure. Lithium Royalty Corp is publicly traded on the Toronto Stock Exchange, ticker symbol LIRC. To find out more about Lithium Royalty Corp, visit lithiumroyaltycorp.com. I continue to take cues from the China Zodiac. If I'm right, 2023's Year of the Rabbit could end very positively, as did 2022's Tiger by the Tail. But might the USA's election in November 2024's Year of the Dragon be a transition to a bear lithium market in 2025's Year of the Snake? Much as I like to think lithium equity investing should be a one-way bet, history has proved over and over to expect velocity. Euphoria, followed by sadness, followed by euphoria. In a structurally undersupplied market for battery-grade lithium chemicals, the RK Equity Scoreboard no doubt has now in oversupply of lithium investment opportunities. It is important to be selective. It is a stock picker's market. Last November, I referenced the growing number of Crocodile Dundee Australians plying their craft in underexplored and undervalued Canada. This region remains a significant area of focus of RK Equity. 2023 so far has been the year that auto OEMs and incumbent lithium producers have begun to get serious. In January, Tesla replaced its fixed price spodumene offtake with Piedmont to market-based pricing. GM then announced a 650 million investment in Lithium Americas, and LG Chem invested 75 million in Piedmont. Tesla broke ground at Corpus Christi, Texas for lithium hydroxide for its most sexy vehicles, in addition to Cybertruck and Semi. Ford signed five substantial lithium supply deals with Albemarle, SQM, Namaska, Compass, Energy Source Minerals. Albemarle bid $3.5 billion for Liontown, which has been rejected as too low. Liontown's stock price today is materially higher than ALB's $2.5 bid. 
Albemarle also announced a $1.5 billion investment in a South Carolina Megaflex, which targets 100,000 tons hydroxide capacity in coming years. And Livent and Alchem are merging to create the number three largest producer globally. To discuss that merger in greater detail, I revive a narrative I started in 2018, comparing tier one producer Livent to the Oscar-winning Rocky franchise. Survivor, Paul Graves, has the eye of the tiger. He is now hitting his stride with an agreed merger of equals to create a 10 billion plus market cap globally diversified lithium pure play. The five year period since Livent's IPO were like Rocky I and Rocky II. Livent is now entering its Rocky III phase, from which I predict it will be well positioned to take down the biggest challenge in Rocky IV, a supersized China Drago. I've often used Allchem and its predecessor Aura Cobre to articulate the point that buying the dips will be rewarded with higher love. As my friend and Aura Cobre founder James Calloway tells it, incumbent producers at Fast Market's first lithium conferences assured attendees they had all the lithium the world needed and there was no future for junior developers. Since its 2007 IPO around 20 cents and 25 million market cap, Alchem has explored, developed, permitted, financed, and began producing lithium six years ago from a conventional brine operation in Argentina. It is a testament to Alchem's success over these 15 years that its shareholders will receive 56% of the merged company, while 80-year-old Livent, which has higher production and generally produces lithium to higher quality specification than Alchem, will receive 44%. My biggest takeaway from this merger is summed up in this Bloomberg quote from Paul Graves. America-centric is the big differentiator for us with customers, with investors. China, where US-based Livent has refineries, will not be a focus of growth for us in the future. The growth area is really investing in Argentina, investing in Canada, investing in localized Western supply chains. IRA-compliant lithium chemicals is key as big money Biden has supercharged America's positioning in the battery arms race. Livent and Allchem today produce and sell some 35,000 tons of lithium chemicals and 150,000 tons of spodumene. By 2027, they expect lithium chemical capacity of near 250,000. To put that number in perspective, 250,000 is larger than the entire battery grade lithium market just a few years ago. Like many, I was surprised to hear of this merger despite the obvious strategic logic, because I thought either Livent and or Allchem would more likely get bought by a company like Rio Tinto, who has been active developing its own lithium assets in Serbia and paid a rich 800 million price for the challenging lithium brine project Rincon in Argentina. But never underestimate big mining to continue to make big strategic mistakes. Livent Alchem is a globally diversified industrials company in the sexiest specialty chemical niche growing five to 10 times GDP growth. I see valuation uplift from Alchem's perspective as its assets will trade for the first time within the full NYSE listed company that is Livent. And by keeping the ASX listing, Australian holders will now have exposure to Livent's world-class assets in Argentina and more advanced spodumene to hydroxide strategy in the hottest growth area in lithium, Quebec. Alchem's carbonate solves Livent's historic hydroxide problem, leaving it short its own carbonate, which forced it to buy third-party carbonate at often inopportune times. This should ensure higher quality and more predictable earnings. With the number six and number four producers consolidating to number three, the oligopoly that is lithium, in particular those qualified with Livent's tier one customers like Tesla, Ford, GM, and BMW will retain pricing power and strong software-like margins. The merger will accelerate the development of the North American lithium triangle from Carolina to Quebec to Ontario. This spodumene hydroxide triangle is first among equals, in my opinion, when thinking of developing a secure, scalable, sustainable strategic supply chain for North America. And Quebec is first among equals within the North American Lithium Triangle. Rockin' in the free world lithium 1.0 and lithium 2.0 was fraught with failure. But my, my, hey, hey, Neil Young's Canada Rock is here to stay. Sayana and Born to Run Piedmont will imminently turn Quebec's badlands to the promised land, to extend two Springsteen metaphors, which will be followed soon by Livent's permanent Damasca, now partnered with Ford, and the future integration with Allchem's partially permanent James Bay Mine. 
Livent Allchem is positioned well to lead the likely consolidation of Canada's spodumene rocks. Rocky Quebec, in my opinion, Mr. Market gave zero value for Namaska inside Livent and zero value for James Bay inside Allchem. They are lithium freebirds to draw from Leonard Skinner. Considering the growing valuations of pre-producers in Quebec on RK's equity scoreboard, I see substantial valuation uplift inside Livent Allchem from their critical Canada rocks. Rocky Quebec should also draw strategic attention to the deeply discounted valuation of critical elements, the next spodumene cab off the rank, permitted and primed for partnership. Sarah Marisol recently left Tesla's procurement team after five years and has moved to Montreal and Livent. Her focus is on the development of Quebec, a key growth driver for the combined company. Sarah's rushed to go long, what Tesla is short. KISS, Rocky Lithium, Spodumene Software, Canada Rocks. At Livent's 2018 IPO, I suggested Underdog Rocky would follow its inspirational theme song, Gonna Fly Now. The $17 IPO cratered through the COVID trough around $3. I don't always get it right. Livent's profitability and stock price has since recovered to $25, a respectable 50% above IPO over five years. As the spot lithium price has bottomed and shor sharply bounced, I again believe LTHM is now poised to gonna fly now. As should other Canada Rock stories, this chart from newly renamed Champion Electric Metals, which took inspiration from Livent for its new ticker symbol on the Canadian Stock Exchange, LTHM.CN. Lithium equities, spodrine exploration stories in particular, tend to follow the typical Pierre Lasson life cycle curve. When the backdrop for any commodity like spodrine is hot, new discoveries can result in parabolic price rises. Focused on Rocky Quebec, Champion Electric Metals is one of my newest investments and is a new RK Equity client. I've known the CEO, Jonathan Buick, for 15 years and have been impressed with the board of proven lithium executives he has assembled, which have invested nearly $2 million in personal capital into the company in recent months. Not financial advice, please do your own research, but with the large acreage position in between Unicorn Patriot and following Winsome's 10x price rise to 300 million market cap in the last few months, I am hoping Champion will have similar success with early drilling and could achieve continued market recognition well above its 25 million market cap. This battery map slide from Piedmont Lithium demonstrates the USA alone needs about 700,000 tons of hydroxide, not carbonate, hydroxide, by 2030. Albemarle and Livent from their operations in North Carolina currently produce only about 20,000 tons. Quebec produces some 3 million tons of aluminum and a million and a half tons of alumina across more than 10 smelters and refineries. I foresee a dozen or more lithium chemical refineries over the next 5 to 20 years sprouting up in Quebec and other areas in eastern North America. The North American Lithium Triangle, hydroxide hubs, sustainable lithium sourced here should warrant green premium pricing, as aluminum currently does, and double-digit specialty chemical EBITDA, EBITDA multiples. And finally, a short good grief personal update 14 months after my life experienced a most unimaginable tragedy, as some of you may know. On Friday, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, at a restaurant on 52nd Street in New York, I met an uptown girl. The night ended with one kiss, a song by Dua Lipa, that resonates more in my life today than anything ever sung by Gene Simmons. Six weeks later, on another Friday, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, a song played both that morning in my car and later that night at a restaurant with this beautiful woman. The Cure, Friday, I'm in love. I conclude again with Billy Joel, the lyric today that best summarizes my life. I don't need you to worry for me, because I'm all right. This is a list of all companies RK Equity has represented in the lithium battery material space over the past 14 years. And this is a disclaimer of all companies we advise or hold equity positions in. To be clear, RK Equity is not an investment advisor and nothing I've said here is investment advice. They're just my opinions, but I would highly recommend that you do your own research. As I expect, many of the unicorns that have grown 10 to 20 times in recent years may still triple or quadruple in coming years. And other early stage companies may follow their pioneering brethren and grow from 25 million market cap to 1 billion during the same time frame. 
Thanks very much again to Fast Markets, and see you soon.